Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I host this prepping and preparedness channel on YouTube, and if you've been watching it for any amount of time, you know that I talk about all sorts of topics from alien invasions and zombie apocalypses down to the mundane stuff like power outages, winter storms, floods, wildfires, things of that nature. I tend to focus more on the boring stuff because that's the stuff that happens more frequently. I know if you look in a history book, there are only a certain handful of times where there have actually been a zombie apocalypse in the past but you know every single year there's winter storms there's power outages there's fl floods there's all sorts of things like that so i think it's a great access point for people to engage with prepping and preparedness if you talk more about the things that there's no controversy about whether it's going to happen it's just you know when it happens wouldn't you like to make things nicer for yourself so i like to keep things kind of uh normal and mundane that also keeps the sub count nice and low on my channel um that's the way i kind of like to do things i don't like to talk about kind of the uh the fringy things that are a little bit, um, you know, uncharted territory. You know, uh, you know, uh, an extinction level event like an asteroid coming in. You know, you can speculate about that kind of stuff, but having not gone through it every single year, you know, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit difficult to approach that, and I think it's a little bit daunting for people. Uh, if you're doing prepping and preparedness correctly, you're doing it in a way where, uh, you know, when events happen. Uh, they're not causing you to change your routine at all. Uh, you know, if well, here's an example: when uh, you know in the early days of COVID, uh, there were all these issues with people getting toilet paper. It wasn't even a blip on our radar here. We had plenty of cases of toilet paper. It was you know it wasn't anything that I had to change any of my patterns uh, regarding. And that's that's the way things should be if you're doing prepping and preparedness properly. That said, as the situation changes, oftentimes you need to evolve, and that's what I want to talk about in this video is a part of my uh, lifestyle, my patterns, that's starting to evolve because the patterns around us are starting to change. Um, and this puts me into territory that's a little bit uncomfortable for me. I'm comfortable with the idea of, you know, just kind of uh, living, uh, you know, if not off-grid, but like separated from a lot of society. When things are going crazy in one area, it's, it doesn't really impact me here. When there's, you know, food issues or supply issues, it doesn't really impact me here. That's something that I am comfortable with because I've established a lot of these routines. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just part of my daily life. So when things go, you know, crazy for one person, it turns their world upside down because of the patterns that I've created here, because of the patterns I live by, it hasn't really impacted me very much. But like I said, I am starting to adapt to certain changes in the environment. I want to talk a little bit about those here in this video, and they are in regards specifically to, uh, you know, safety and security uh, issues in our uh, Western world at the moment. Uh, you know, specifically here, I live in the United States, and, uh, you know, the situation really is changing, and I think that it uh, requires that people kind of adapt to that change. You know, in the same way that, uh, you, know, it, you know, you go from summer to winter or winter to summer, uh, you know, if you're still wearing winter clothes in the middle of summer, that's going to be a problem for you, or vice versa, you know, you're certainly going to have issues with that. Uh, and if you are acting in a society as though it is a safe, secure society where you don't really have to worry about a lot of criminality and your society is turning into a society that is not that, you're going to cause problems for yourself. Conversely, you know, you can have issues if you are moving from a place that is very dangerous into a place that is very safe. You see with that with, uh, you know, soldiers coming home from battlefields, it can be difficult for them to kind of uh, acclimatize themselves to the new situation where like every snap of a twig is not like a death threat, you know, waiting to take you out. So it's important to kind of uh, have a good sense of what your environment is uh, around you and to you know set your patterns around that so there are some of my patterns that I'm beginning I'm beginning to kind of alter and modify here on my channel again if you watch it uh, you know frequently you'll notice that one of the things is different between my channel and a lot of other prepping and preparedness channels is I don't talk a lot about uh, you know I don't talk a lot about the bullets parts of the uh, bullets, band-aids, and beans. I, I forget what the exact order of that, with bullets, beans, and band-aids, whatever. But I don't tend to talk a lot about the bullet part of it. There's a couple reasons for that. One, I don't have as much expertise in that. Uh, you know, I have a lot more expertise in uh, some of the other things, so I like to share things that I know more about with you guys. And the other reason is because uh, I think it's unwise to share a lot of that stuff. You know. I, I, as somebody that uh, projects a lot of my information out onto the internet, I, my real name isn't Praxis, <laughs> if you weren't uh, already aware of that. Uh, I try to keep my location, uh, si uh, you know, kind of uh, private. I, you know, I don't, I don't advertise where I live. I know other, 
uh, preppers here on YouTube uh, who have uh, you know not been trying to share their location. You know, it, it, it slips out one way or the other. I've been try I've tried to be really uh, 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 private about that type of thing. But uh, you know, presuming that I might invariably fail at some point to do that, I don't want to do a rundown of exactly all the defenses that I have in the house. That's just it's unwise. So I don't tend to talk about it. But I do feel a responsibility, you guys, uh, to to bring up the topic because just the fact that I don't talk about a lot doesn't mean it's not something that I think about and specifically now at this point in history uh, I think that it is something that we really all need to be uh, really think of, thinking about here in the Western world. So have I lost all the people with the short attention spans because we're about to talk about the real topic. <coughs> oh sorry, breathing some cold air. It's starting to get cold here too. I got my summer lungs in there still. Huh, okay. Um, yeah, so the things that I'm starting to modify. One, uh, it, it I mean, it's kind of the most conspicuous thing to me personally is that, uh, you know, I own firearms. I have owned firearms for a while. Again, I don't talk about them a lot on my channel, but I do have them. I do have a lot of them. Uh, I'm the kind of person that if, uh, you know, if I was found guilty of some sort of a crime and the police came to my house, they'd be like, he was stockpiling, you know, ridiculous amounts of, you know, whatever, you know, uh, you know, so I've got that stuff, but I don't talk about that stuff. And, uh, and I don't, uh, you know, heretofore, I haven't tended to implement that stuff as much of my preps. Uh, specifically, I haven't been concealed carrying until now. It's actually something that I've started doing. Uh, as the environment's been changing, you know, you, you know, you see news stories about what's kind of going on in our world, and I have started to conceal carry. Uh, you know, it's something that I have the right to do in the area that I am in, and I think that it would be foolish for me to be in a situation, you know, to have the uh, access to the resources that I have, and then to find myself in a situation where I didn't bring those things along, and, you know, to wish that you had them, because, you know, a, a pistol doesn't do you any good back at home in your gun safe. It's only, you know, useful if you have it when you need it. So that is something that I've started to, uh, you know, carry when I go to certain places. Not everywhere that I go, but when there are certain, you know, there are certain areas where, you know, things are more likely. I still think that, uh, you know, situations are, you know, not it, it, impending. It, you know, we're not in a situation where, like, every time you go to the grocery store, there's going to be a mass shooting. Uh, but, you know, it, those uh, situations are growing, and they're growing for a number of reasons. Uh, you know, one of them is, uh, you know, the, the situation with police and policing. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of issues where, you know, I'll say right off the bat, I. I know personally there are a lot of really wonderful cops out there. I think most cops are probably pretty decent at it, though I think like probably a lot of contractors, um, I would probably have negative opinions about most cops in the same way I have negative opinions about most plumbers and most doctors or whatever. But I know for a fact that a lot of people that go into policing, I hope the, the preponderance of them, they go into it for the right reason and they don't want to abuse their authority. Uh, that said, you know, clearly there have been situations where police ha you know, the wrong person has become a police officer and they have abused that authority. And that is impacting the way our culture, uh, you know, a lot of people in our society here view policing. And, uh, you know, uh, whether that's merited or, or not merited, and I think it kind of is merited, I do think that, you know, some police officers have abused their authority. Not all of them and not everyone that gets accused of abusing their authority actually has done so. But I, I, I certainly think that it's happened and, uh, you know, whether you believe that it, uh, you know, is merit or not, the reality is that, you know, uh, policing is starting to kind of break down to some degree. People are losing confidence in it, budgets are being withdrawn, uh, and police are not able to fill a, a lot of the roles that they used to fill in our society. Uh, and that's creating a void, and uh, regular citizens are going to start needing, uh, being forced to fill in that void. You know, we saw that recently with the Kyle Rittenhouse uh, situation where uh, there was a situation where, you know, I, I, if I was in Kyle Rittenhouse's position, I would not have put myself in that situation. I would not needlessly go into a situation that I know to be dangerous. Um, you know, that's my personal view on it. But that said, once you find yourself in that situation, I think he had every right to defend himself. And I think we're going to see more and more situations like that where individual citizens are feeling the need to fill in that void that is left by, you know, the police withdrawing or pulling back, you know, either because of the lack of faith in them or just simply the lack of budgets. And the lack of budgets goes across the board and it's creating all sorts of other situations like this too. Our, e our economy is going through uh, what you might almost call an unprecedented contraction. You know, and certainly no one in our lifetime has ever seen what we are on the cusp of seeing. 
And that is gonna have enormously damaging impacts on a lot of people's lives. And when the economy gets bumpy, you know, things happen where, you know, people start feeling desperate and they might feel the need to do things that they wouldn't otherwise do. We're seeing, uh, you know, thefts and uh, th things of that nature uh, rise. And we're seeing violence in general uh, rise. You know, people are stressed out. They are angry at each other. People have lost the ability uh, on a large, uh, for a large part, to uh, interact with each other in a civil way. I think all of us here in, uh, you know, in our culture, uh, we've lived in a civilized world for so long that we take it for granted that this is the baseline, this is the norm, this is what we'll always have, and we don't need to work at being civil in order to keep our civilization. Uh, you know, and we're seeing a lot of that break down, and for all of these reasons, I think it's really prudent to start thinking more about safety and security in ways that we haven't before. Like I said, I've begun concealed carrying. If you want to do that, you know, find a legal way of doing that in your state, whether it's pepper spray or, you know, yeah, whatever, you know, it, like different areas allow different things. You know, get the proper training to do it uh, properly. I think, you know, going back to the Kyle Rittenhouse case, I think that the only reason that Kyle was able to survive in order to be prosecuted was because he had the necessary training to use his firearm in a way that allowed him to, uh, you know, escape from that situation. Uh, situation. And I know a lot of people have different views on, you know, whether that, uh, that situation could have played out better. But here's the reality. When you get into it, and this is coming from somebody that's never been in a violent situation, but I believe uh, the word of so many people that I've listened to that have been in violent situations, this makes so much sense to me that when there is a violent situation, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and things do not go beautifully when things get violent and bloody like that. That's why we have a civilization, because that stuff, you know, you can, you can, uh, you know, what, what, what's a, like, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, like lounge chair quarterbacking or like, you know, you can sit back in the, in the cool, uh, you know, safe environment of your home, watching a YouTube screen and critique the actions of someone that is under pressure. You know, uh, you know, uh, Kyle shouldn't have shot this person. He could, or you could have shot him in the knee, like we see in the Terminator movies or whatever. But when, when those situations are actually coming up, they're uncontrolled, they are kinetic. The person in it has no idea where it's about to go. They see what's in front of them. They have no idea what's behind them. Uh, you know, you freak out, and that's one of the reasons why you try to keep yourself out of those situations. But when they happen, you know, there's no telling where they're going to go, and tragedy unfolds from them over and over again. And we're going to see so much more of that as people find themselves in the role of, you know, what used to be police officers, you know, fending for their own safety. If you feel like a lot of police officers didn't have enough training, didn't have enough uh, training to deal with their situations, if you feel like you see a lot of police officers lose it, you know, just wait until it's civilians that are kind of filling in that role. It's going to be even worse, I would, I would speculate. Um, so, you know, we're moving into that. So, okay, concealed carrying, that's something that I'm doing. If you have the means to have a way of defending yourself legally on your person as you go out, I think it makes sense to do so. And it also makes sense to not needlessly put yourself into dangerous situations. Having a firearm on you or whatever type of defensive tool that you have on you uh, is a means of protecting your safety and getting yourself out of a situation. It is not a license to put yourself into a dangerous situation. At least that's the way that I, I view it. So that is one way that you can, you know, if you need to go out, you know, go to the grocery store or whatever, you know, you know things that are important for you to do, you can add that extra layer uh, of security. And while you're out there, don't just be thinking about, well, I'm going to shoot my way out of any problem. As you're in a store, pay attention to where the exits are, where the back doors are, where the emergency exits are. If you hear something going down in the store, you know, take your family and remove yourselves from that situation. You know, you have the firearm as a last line of defense, but it shouldn't be your first line of defense. You should try to get yourself out of that situation because, you know, even no matter what happens, there's always tragedy that unfolds when these situations arise. And, and quite frequently, the people that are uh, the instigators of these situations are the kind of people that, you know, really... You, you know, under different circumstances in their lives, they would not have found themselves there, either from mental illness or desperation. Who knows what, you know, was the cause for this. But, you know, the, the best outcome that you can get is keep yourself safe, keep yourself, your family safe, and, you know, try to keep our world as civil as we can. Now, what happens if the, the trouble comes to you? Uh, this, you know, that's all talking about, like, going out into the world, like, you know, you know, how you might deal with that, and that is, like, situational awareness, paying attention to what's around you, knowing where the exits are, and having a tool to defend yourself if it comes to that. But what if the trouble comes to you? One thing about building this house, uh, I thought a lot about, uh, you know, the safety and security of, you know, if we were in a situation where things, you know, went down that way. The big thing that uh, is... Uh, 
uh, helpful about uh, this house is its location. And I, I picked this shot specifically, uh, you know, based on, on that. You know, the house, it's off in the woods. It's it's remote, it's removed. Uh, you know, now there's the downsides to that as well. Uh, you know, the, the police presence in this town, we don't constantly have police going up and down the streets patrolling. Uh, you know, so you're a little bit on your own, but you're also far removed for tr from trouble. Uh, you know, when when you hear about situations that, you know, are going down, they're usually in places that are more densely packed, there's more people, and when you have more people together, there's more uh, opportunity for that. So I think it makes a lot of sense to move out to the country, but that's not something you do like over a weekend. It's like, oh, honey, this weekend, you know, uh, uh, you know, we're not doing anything on Sunday. Why don't we move out to the country? I know that that's more of a long-term plan, but if you are starting to develop your long-term plans for where you see our civilization headed, Moving out to an area that's more remote might be a good idea for you. Once you have uh, that location, or you know, what, even if you are staying in a place that's not quite as remote, you know, how can you make it so that your house is more secure? Uh, you know, I have layers of security on my ho uh, house, and again, I don't like to talk about the specifics, but I try to make it difficult for someone to come in, and I try to make it so that if someone is coming in, they're going to need to do so in a way that. Um, is not going to be secret that people are going to know what they're doing and people can have that time to prepare either to you know evacuate the area or to you know you know repel that uh, um, that threat that's coming in so uh, and there are multiple ways of doing that you can do that by uh, making it so that you have uh, effective locks on your doors making sure that the uh, the screws that secure your deadbolts or your locks into the door are actually long screws that go all the way into the uh, uh, the frame of the door around it they're not just the you know tiny little screws that go in there and that's as simple as just backing the screws out and putting another screw in that's about the right you know the right uh, dimension in terms of the head but has a, a much longer shaft that's not going to be a, a you know permanent defense it's not like oh don't worry no one can get in i put longer screws on the doors but it's going to help to slow people down if you have glass uh you know windows or you have glass around your door you can put uh films on those glass uh you know panels in order to make it uh not impossible to get through them but uh it'll take a lot more time to get through them it's going to make a lot more racket and it's going to slow people down to get through them so it gives you more time to prepare by the way some of the things that i'm talking about here in this video i'm going to put links down in the description below if you're not familiar with them uh you know these are things that you can easily pick up uh you know right now at the moment um, also, once you, uh, uh, you know, kind of have your house, you know, secured in a way where, uh, you know, it, it's slower for people to come uh, to get into the house, it's, it's important to have other ways of kind of having a sense of what's going on, like, you know, in your house and around your house. I like to use motion alarms, uh, you know, at our place so that if someone is moving through an area, I have a sense of it. It doesn't send off like sirens or whatever. They, you know, it's quiet, but it lets you know you know, there's something going on over there. Uh, and, and they're in different areas, and some of them are outside, some of them are inside. The outside ones, uh, they're less of a uh, alarm bell if they go off, because there's deer out here, there's raccoons out here, there's squirrels out here. There's other things that can set those off. So, you know, it's kind of a subtle thing, but if you hear that subtle thing go off, and then you hear something closer to your house go off, and then you hear something, you know, we have greenhouses on the sides of our house where they act as kind of entryways. Certainly if we hear something is, you know, active and moving around in the greenhouse, you know, we've had, uh, we've had kind of a build-up period where we can think, oh, you know, uh, I just heard the chime for, you know, this remote area. I'm going to pay a little attention to here if I hear another chime. And it kind of, it makes it so that you don't have to go zero to 60, uh, you know, in like 0.1 second, whatever. You know you, you, you know, you hear the smash on the door and, you know, it's like it's two seconds before someone's in your house. It gives you that kind of a lag time to, you know, prepare for, uh, you know, what you might have to deal with. Uh, in terms of having uh, the ability to defend yourself within your house, it's really important that you have safes that, uh, you know, hold firearms if you're allowed to legally own firearms. Uh, it's important that you have safes that you can get into quickly, like you know where the key is, or if uh, you know it's a safe that has like a combination lock. I have one that I really love that's for my handguns. It's a, a V-line safe, and it has uh, there's five buttons, and you push them in kind of a combination, and you can push like two buttons at the same time, so it's quick. It's like pop, 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 and you're in, as opposed to like you know left to you know 15, right past 15, going to you know what I mean. It, it's a it's a, a quick way to get in. Uh, so. If you are going to have some kind of a defensive weapon, it's important that you can actually get it into some in some kind of a timely fashion. But the most important thing above all of this is just start thinking about this stuff. You know, uh, if we take for granted the world that we've had in the past and think that that's what we're always going to have in the future, when the future invariably 
changes on us, uh, you know, that's going to cause a problem for us. And that is true whether it is climate change, that is true whether it's your job security. It's like, oh, I got a job. I'll always have that job. I don't have to worry about like any financial security. I'll always have that job. Um, and, it's, and it's true of safety and security in our society. And unfortunately, in our society, I think that we've taken for granted for so long the idea that we have security and we have a civilization that we've forgotten how to secure ourselves and we've forgotten how to be civil with each other. That's it. Give it some thought. Everyone's individual situation is going to be different, but the most important thing is start thinking about it now and don't wait until you hear that shattering glass at your front door. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.